benefit? I mean, is this mm -hmm. something that older people should be taking or athletes or younger, or is there any specification? So one thing I, uh, in the introduction to urolithin, which I didn't really point out was not everybody can produce urolithin A naturally. So not everybody has the gut microbiome, okay? So if you are, uh, there are two factors you need. One is the diet. So you need to be eating a lot of berries, nuts, and drinking a lot of pomegranate juice, which is great. And second, you then need to have the right gut microbiome to naturally produce your Now, I, I have looked at my own microbiome and I can drink six glasses of juice. My microbiome will never produce your uh, And the reasons could be because of my diet differences, you know, maybe Western diet was uh, I'm originally from India. I've migrated to the U.S. And, and now living in Switzerland, eating a lot of cheese. So maybe my microbiome is not uh, diverse enough to produce your uh, So... And, and in our studies, what we are seeing only 30% to maximum 40% people can make this molecule naturally if they're eating right. So anybody who's not eating right, anybody who's not able to produce substantial amounts of urotin A, well, they are, uh, they are the obvious consumers for supplementation with, with our product. Second, your second question was which populations would benefit? And I think uh, it, it will be helpful, obviously, uh, when the aging process is accelerated, this is where most of our clinical studies are in, in 40 to 65 year olds. And then we just hopefully we are coming out in the next month with a big paper in 65 to 90 year olds uh, who have declining mitochondrial health. And we are showing in both these populations that we are improving strength and, uh, and uh, endurance. Now, back to your question, would it work for athletes and exercising people? I think the answer is yes, but we are running that clinical trial in Australia as we speak uh, in, in basically Olympian level athletes to see if we boost their recovery and can it also impact on their performance measures. So it would benefit older people more because their mitophagy is becoming less effective, uh, but it would still benefit younger people. It, would, would that be like yeah, I, I think a lot of times overtraining in athletes uh, this is, uh, causes uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. Right. A lot of times if you get injured and you twist uh, your ankle and you're bedridden for two weeks, you, you become suddenly sedentary and you, you induce mitochondrial dysfunction, right? And so a lot of our new studies are actually asking these questions. What is the effect on prolonged periods of immobilization? What is the effect on overtraining and, you know, in these athletes who are, you know, when they compete, they do five races over a week, you know? Uh, so what is the effect uh, there? So I think it would work. Uh, mitophagy is a process that is uh, very well conserved in our cells. So it's happening in everybody. And now of course uh, it, it's declines with aging. So it makes sense uh, that that population after your, you hit your forties uh, starts taking this product. So we, we kind of talked about the natural sources of urolithin A. So it's, it's yeah. berries, pomegranate, and mm -hmm. walnuts. So, so then it gets converted by, by your gut microbiome. What do we know about the kind of microbiome that you need? Do, do we know which mm -hmm. particular species are important? Yeah, that's a great question. It's a question we have asked for a long time uh, in our research team. Uh, we have looked at it uh, from different angles. The, the answer... Uh, the short answer is probably there is uh, not a single strain that can do this. Uh, gut microbiome is a very complex ecosystem with thousands of species that need to interact in perfect symphony with each other. Now, what we do know uh, in the study we published earlier this year in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition, what we showed was that if you take 100 people and you give them a glass of juice, as I mentioned, only 40% people convert it, Okay. Now we took those 40% people and we took a look at their gut microbiome versus the 60% who did not convert. Uh, and what we found was at, at, uh, at just a very uh, overarching uh, gut microbiome phenotype was that uh, people who converted very well, they had a much more diverse and much more richer uh, microbiome. What that means is, well, they're eating more fiber, they're eating, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of fruits and nuts in their diet versus those uh, who are probably not eating right, you know, probably a lot of uh, fast food, et cetera. Uh, the second thing we found was that there were certain species uh, upregulated like Ackermansia, uh, which is also a, a famous uh, um, gut microbial species associated with, you know, health benefits. So we did see more Ackermansia in the people who produce. Now is Ackermansia responsible for the conversion? 
We don't know. Uh, but we do know that there is a certain uh, gut microbiome phenotype that is prevalent in, uh, in those who produce, uh, who are blessed, as I say, to make it naturally. How can we, how can we tell if we're within the 40% or not? Is there any kind of way? So we are working on that. We are, our company is uh, actually testing a cl in a clinical study, a virtual clinical trial, a very simple test, uh, uh, and it's called the MitoPure Challenge. So we, we send you a, a kit at your home, and, and uh, it's basically uh, blood spots. So you, you bleed a little bit of your capillary blood, and you put it on a fil filter paper. And, you, and that way you know uh, you can drink a glass of juice, you can eat a bowl of nuts, and that way you'll know if you are actually a natural producer. And then you can actually take in the kit, you, this, uh, we, we give you one sachet of our product. So you can take this product and then you can bleed, uh, do another test in the same kit at six hours after, which we know is the peak concentration in the blood of, of urolithin A. And then you send it to our lab and we'll be able to tell you if you A, were a producer or not, and B, the full difference in blood that you will see uh, being on the supplement and, uh, versus, you know, thinking if you're going to get it from the diet. So this is a test we are working on. It's a very simple, easy test to do. Right. Interesting. That's, that's really good. So, but, but uh, think about that. So if I'm taking, if I'm eating pomegranates, like, do we have any idea, like how many, suppose I'm a, one of the blessed, how yeah. many pomegranates I need to eat to, to be able to get the same kind of level yeah. So you need to drink six glasses of juice to get what's in one sachet of this. Now, right. six glasses of juice, one glass of juice is basically four pomegranates. Wow. That's a lot of pomegranates. So you, so you need to drink that. Yeah. And of course, you get, uh, in addition to the polyphenols, you get a lot of natural sugars. One glass of juice is about 30 grams of sugar. So there you go. Um, so, yeah, yeah uh, you know, uh, and that's one of the reasons if you you know, I think to, to, to take this supplement is because you're short circuiting the whole biology, right? Uh, even if you are a producer, it takes about a, a 24 hours to 48 hours for you. If you're eating nuts and berries for the gut microbiome to convert here, you take the product that it hits the peak in the blood at six hours. Okay. So, and then it's gone by 24 hours. So that it's half life is about a day, which is great because then you take one, one a day of this sachet or, uh, you take the pills. Uh, so, yeah, you're short circuiting with the supplementation, essentially, the whole uh, natural conversion of uh, urolithin A. Yes, that would be a lot of fructose. Oh.